Hi friends, welcome to Dr. Ram's Medical Coding Academy. I hope all of you are safe. Guys, please be aware that this session is also included for this meet syllabus. So please share with your kid and kin, your friends, your near and dear ones. If there are any students who are preparing for the NEET exams, so this session will be of utmost importance and useful to them. I have clearly highlighted each of the structure that is being found in this entire system and this will be very helpful for them. People who are preparing for NEET and people who are aspiring to be future medical coders. Today we are going to discuss the GI system or the elementary system. The word elemento, it refers to food. So the system that is involved with the nourishment, we call it as the elementary system and the alternative names are the digestive system or the GI system, which is a gastrointestinal system. We need to know that this system has two pathways. One has the GI tract and the other is the accessory pathway, which is the hepatobiliary system. Talking about the GI tract, we need to know the first part of the GI system, which is the mouth. The mouth is being guarded by the lips. So the lips also has a border called as the vermilion border. Next, we are going to see the structures that follow the mouth. We have the oropharynx in which the foot goes, which enters via this precord sphincter called as a pipe, which is the esophagus. From the esophagus, the foot enters the stomach and from the stomach, the foot moves towards the intestinal system. Here begins a small intestine, which is made up of the duodenum, jejunum, ileum. And then we have the large intestine. Then the bolus enters the rectum, which is now being excreted via the anus. So the GI system begins with the mouth and ends at the anal canal. We can conveniently divide the structures of the GI tract into various localized regions as the oral cavity and then the intestines. Let's go to the structures that are present in the oral cavity or in the buccal cavity. We can also appreciate the medical terms that are associated with these structures. The opening of the mouth we say as stoma, so an inflammation as stomatitis and the lips we call it as chilo and then we are entering the vestibule vestibule it is a space you know if you want to remember just think of you are going to brush your teeth so the space in between the cheeks and the teeth we call that as a vestibule then we enter the teeth we have the icpm which is the incisor canine premolar and molar the teeth is made up of three structures, which is the enamel, dentine, and pulp. The enamel is the hardest part in the human body. We have the gums, which we call it as gingivo, and the teeth we call it as odonto. So if a patient is presenting with pain in the teeth, we call it as odontalgia. If there is inflammation of the gums, we call it as gingivitis. Then we have the tongue, which is called as glosso or as linguo. So inflammation of tongue, we all know as glossitis. Next, we have a partition called as a palate, which separates the nasal cavity from the oral cavity. We have the hard palate, which is in the anterior region, which is hard because it is made up of bones, palatine bones. And posteriorly, it is soft palate because it is made up of the muscle. So we call it as a soft palate and more posteriorly, there is a teardrop like projection called as a ovula. Sometimes there is enlargement of the ovula and thereby the surgeon performs a ovulectomy. Let's move on to the next structure, which is a food pipe, which is the esophagus. And this continues downwards as a stomach. The junction we call it as the gastroesophageal junction. Now the stomach is made up of various regions. We call it as the fundus of the stomach and then the antrum or the body. There is a lesser and greater curvature of the stomach and the terminal portion of the stomach, we call it as pylorus. Pylorus continues as the small intestine. More specifically, it is the duodenum. 
So duodenum is technically the first part of the small intestine which continues as jejunum and later on it becomes ileum. So we have the duodenum, jejunum and the ileum as a parts of the small intestine. From the ileum there arises the large intestine which we also call it as a colon. The first part of the large intestine is the cecum which continues as the ascending colon. The ascending colon makes a bend so that it becomes a horizontal or a transverse colon and this bend we call it as a flexure. The region where the ascending colon makes a bend with the transverse colon we call that as the right colonic flexure or the hepatic flexure and the transverse colon becomes the descending colon and at this region there is another bend which we call it as the left colonic flexure or the splenic flexure. The splenic flexure leads to the descending colon which gives rise to the sigmoid colon and then the rectum. Rectum leads to the anal canal. So this is how the entire GA tract is being arranged. Apart from these, we also have the hepatobiliary system or the accessory tract. Here, liver is a major organ and as you all know, liver is the largest exocrine gland as it produces the bile. All exocrine glands have ducts and there are two lobes in the liver, the right and the left. So we have the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct which forms a common hepatic duct. This common hepatic duct joins with another duct. So before going to this duct, you need to know that there is another structure which lies in the inferior surface of the liver which we call it as the gallbladder. The function of gallbladder is to store and concentrate the bile that has been produced in the liver. There is a cyst that arises from this gallbladder. We call it as a cystic duct which joins with this common hepatic duct to form the bile duct. The bile duct then reaches to the level of the pancreas and here you should know pancreas is the only organ which has both exocrine and endocrine functions. So the exocrine part of the pancreas has a duct called as the pancreatic duct which joins with this biliary duct and at this point there is a dilatation called as the ampoule of waiter. Now the pancreatic duct and the biliary duct forms a hepatopancreatic duct which enters the second part of the duodenum. It is through this tract that the entire bile secretion reaches the small intestine. Let's see certain important other structures that are associated with this GI tract. In the palatine region or in the oral cavity, we have this palatine tonsils and these are lymphoid organs. They play an important role in the defense mechanism. Also, we have the salivary glands and these are three in number. We call it as a parotid gland, the submaxillary gland and the sublingual gland. The function is to produce a saliva. Next, we have these circular muscles which help in the regulation of this foot. We call them as the sphincters. At the G junction, we have a sphincter called as a cardiac sphincter. At the pylorus, there is a pyloric sphincter. And at the hepatopancreatic duct, there is a sphincter called as a sphincter of Odai. Next is most importantly, we have this vermiform appendix, which is again a lymphoid organ, which lies retrocecal in the sense it lies posterior to the cecum. Inflammation of this, we call it as appendicitis. Let's move on to the medical terms. The oral cavity, we call it as oro or bucco, lips as chilo and the opening as tomato, pharynx as pharyngo, the food pipe as esophago and then we have the stomach which we call it as gastro, the small intestine as entero, the large intestine as colo and the rectum as procto. The liver is called as hepato and the gallbladder we call it as cholecysto. Let's move on to the pathological conditions that are associated with the digestive organs. Glossitis as the inflammation of the tongue, cholelithiasis. Please break this word, choly plus litho plus iasis. Choly refers to cholesterol stones or gal, 
Litho refers to stone and Yes is his condition. So this refers to the condition of formation of gall stones in the gall bladder. Inflammation of the small intestine is enteritis. More specifically, we can call it as duodenitis, jejunitis, ileitis. Ulcerative colitis. What is colitis? Inflammation of colon. Ulcerative colitis, it is a type of an inflammatory bowel disease in which there is ulcerations and inflammations of the large intestine. If this same inflammatory condition takes place in the small bubble, we call it as regional enteritis or as Crohn's disease. Appendicitis is the inflammation of the vermiform appendix and proctitis as the inflammation of the rectum. Hepatitis as the inflammation of the liver and cholecystitis is the inflammation of the gall bladder. Cirrhosis is the end stage liver disease in which there is fibrous tissue and scarification of the hepatic parenchyma. Hemorrhoids, please break this word, heme plus roids, which means blood flowing. Literally, it means the flow of blood that takes place from the dilated venous plexus of the rectum. Let's move on to the surgical procedures. EGD. This is a diagnostic technique in which the surgeon is going to visualize the upper digestive tract, which is the esophagus, the stomach, and the duodenum. We call it as esophago-gastro-duodenoscopy. Esophago refers to esophagus, gastro, stomach, duodenum as a duodenum, and scopy refers to the visualization. Colonoscopy is a complete visualization of this entire colon till the level of the cecum and proctoscopy is a visualization of the rectum. Gastrectomy, please break this word, gastroplasectomy, which is a surgical technique of partial or complete resection of the stomach. Then it is enterography, entero refers to intestine and raphi as repair. It is a suture repair of this intestine. Appendectomy is the removal of the appendix and colostomy is the artificial opening that is being created into the colon. If you go to the coding aspect of this gastroenterological conditions or gastrointestinal ailments, the CPT book lists the procedures under the 40,000 series. Now conditions that are associated with the GA tract, we can select the codes from the icd 10 c manual and these codes start with the alphabetic character as K. Let's move on to a coding scenario where Deepak, he has been complaining of a chronic gallstones. So he's having pain in the right hypochondriac region and hereby the gastroenterologist schedules a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Please see the term as laparoscopy. Lapro refers to your abdomen and scopy as a visualization. So the surgeon is going to visualize the structure through a endoscope, which is a laparoscope. And the surgery as cholecystectomy. Cholesis refers to the gall bladder and ectomy as a removal. The surgeon has scheduled the removal of the gall bladder. So she call it as a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. For the gall stones or the cholelithiasis condition, we can report the ICD 10 cm code as K80.20 and the CPT code as 47562. I believe this session would have been of immense help to you. If you have any queries, please post in the comment section. So I'll see you with the next topic. Till then, please take care. You can contact us at 805-60-855-96-99-62-79-1072.